For lecture 19.1, let's finish up energy and phase changes. This question compares two different solids, carbon tetrachloride and water, and we want to know which one has the higher vapor pressure at a particular temperature. Now, technically, you wouldn't even need the phase diagram because many of you realize that carbon tetrachloride, although very heavy, has only dispersion forces, and water has dispersion, dipolar, and H-bonding forces. So carbon tetrachloride with only dispersion forces would have weak intermolecular forces and a higher vapor pressure. But let's go through the process in case you're presented with two mystery liquids. What we are looking at here is a temperature pressure graph of just one portion of a phase diagram. The blue squiggly area is where both carbon tetrachloride and water are in the liquid phase. The red polka dot area is where both carbon tetrachloride and water are in the gas phase. The interesting region is the region in between the two. This region with the V-shaped polka dots is where carbon tetrachloride is a gas because we are to the right of the vapor-liquid equilibrium line. However, water in this region would be a liquid because we are to the left of the liquid-vapor equilibrium line. And so if you're asked, which one has a higher vapor pressure at a particular temperature? It would be easy to just pick one temperature that intersects with both lines. This intersection would give us the vapor pressure of water at that temperature. And this intersection would give us the vapor pressure of carbon tetrachloride at the same temperature. Clearly, we can see that carbon tetrachloride would have the higher vapor pressure. This one asks, which of these two liquids has the higher normal boiling point? As a reminder, this would be the boiling point at one atmosphere. So what we could do is find one atmosphere on the y-axis and then draw horizontal lines. We can see that the line intersects carbon tetrachloride first and water second. So water must have the higher boiling point, and indeed it does. Water boils at 100 degrees at one atmosphere of pressure, and carbon tetrachloride boils at 77 degrees at one atmosphere of pressure. The next question asks, which one of these liquids has the stronger intermolecular forces? As discussed earlier, we know that's water. But if they were mystery liquids, how would you answer this? You might want to answer this by which one stays a liquid longer. So we could draw a line at a particular pressure, and we notice that carbon tetrachloride turns to a gas before water does. So water must have the higher intermolecular forces. Here is a very challenging question. We would like to know what letter combination goes together. I recommend solving this problem by sorting the answers into two boxes, those with strong intermolecular forces and those with weak intermolecular forces. So looking at the liquid vapor equilibrium, does A or B have stronger intermolecular forces. Choose one category for A and the other category for B. Do the same thing for C. Does C or D represent a solution with stronger intermolecular forces? Place one of those letters with strong and the other with weak. And finally, here is ethanol and dimethyl ether. Sort those as having strong or weak intermolecular forces, and you'll find 
one of these matches. Our last change of state is solid to gas. When this occurs directly, the enthalpy of change is known as the heat of sublimation. This will be the amount of heat required to sublime a substance at a given temperature. Where is this transition on the phase diagram? Anywhere between solid and gas phase, which is the purple line, is when solid and gas are in equilibrium, and sublimation and deposition are the two processes that occur. So for carbon tetrachloride, we need to get down to 0.15 atmospheres and minus 39 degrees Celsius in order to see sublimation. While it would be difficult to find conditions outside where carbon tetrachloride would sublime, dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, does so very readily at one atmosphere and room temperature. Let's take a quick peek at a video. Although we can't actually see the gaseous carbon dioxide, we can see the water vapor that occurs when the cool temperature of the newly sublimed carbon dioxide gas begins to condense the water vapor. There are a few other unusual places on phase diagrams. One of these is known as the triple point. This is where solid, liquid and gas exist simultaneously. Another unusual area on phase diagrams is something called the critical point. This has a critical temperature, which is a temperature beyond which liquid cannot exist, and a critical pressure, which is the pressure required to make a liquid at the critical temperature. Beyond these conditions, we have what's called a supercritical fluid. It is neither liquid nor gas. Supercritical fluids have a number of applications. Supercritical carbon dioxide can be achieved at 31 degrees Celsius and 73 atmospheres, and it's used for dry cleaning or extraction. For example, removing caffeine from coffee beans or producing hops for beer or perfumes for raw materials, and also for chemical reactions. Supercritical water can be achieved at 374 degrees Celsius and 218 atmospheres. This can be used in water treatment plants for the oxidation of hazardous waste, and I personally have worked for a company doing chemical reactions in near supercritical water and near supercritical carbon dioxide. So here are some hopefully very simple memorization questions for students. I'd like to know which letter A through F represents a boiling point. Which letter A through F represents a gas only? And which arrow G through L represents sublimation.